In this movie, we're going to look at how you can substitute the sky in a photo like this. So this photo has a sky that is fairly uniform in color. It's a gradient from blue to white, and it's set against some fairly high contrast edges, which makes it a great candidate for this treatment. What I'm going to use is the color range feature, which you find under the select menu, and we're going to choose color range. So what this does is it allows me to click in an area, and it's going to select all of the pixels in the picture that are the same color as that. And how uh, picky it is about how close that color needs to be is what we find on this fuzziness slider. So I may find, well, this is a start to getting the sky selected so I can get rid of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key. And as I do, you'll notice that my cursor has a little plus beside it. And I'm going to click and drag right across the sky. There we are. Now, I have this little mask down here that showed me that I've picked up quite a bit, but I've also picked up some stuff that I don't want. If I want to try and get rid of that, I can hold down my Alt key or my Option key and click on the areas that I want to get rid of. Now, the one thing I have to be very careful of is I might start to lose some of the areas that I want to keep selected. So you only can go so far with this sort of automatic treatment, and then we'll have to refine things manually a bit. I'm pretty happy with what I've got here right now. But if I wasn't, what I could use is this localized color cluster. And what that'll do is, it'll by default, it'll be set at 100. But as we move it down, it'll actually start to disqualify some of the pixels that are far away from the areas where I clicked. So when I was clicking and dragging, I was dragging up here at the very top to sort of stay away from the house as much as possible. But I really don't need that in this case. So I'm just going to turn that off. And I'm going to click OK. So now it's going to give me the marching ants, and I want to save this as a alpha channel, as an alpha channel. So I can go to select, and then choose save selection. I'm going to call this sky, click OK, and I can deselect. I can just choose select, deselect, or press command D, or there's lots of different ways to deselect. Then I'm going to go to my channels panel. Now if you don't have your channels panel, go to window, and it would be under channels right there. So you'll notice that I have this channel, that one's a leftover from a trial run, I'm sorry, uh, that I have this right here, and this is my selection. So great starting place. What I want to get is I want to get rid of the white that's in the areas that aren't sky. So I'm going to use my paintbrush tool. Click right here on the toolbox in it. I want to make sure that I've got black set as my foreground color. If you press the D key, that'll default your colors. And then the X key will move the black out front. So you can adjust the hardness and the size of your brush right here, or you can use your square bracket keys, which is a real easy way, excuse me, to increase the size of your brush, which isn't working right now for some reason. Okay, so I'm just going to paint out these areas right here. For whatever reason, that keyboard shortcut has just failed me. Of course, while I'm recording, but that's okay. So I'm going to click in here. I'm going to paint this area out here. Paint out, paint out, paint out. Paint that out. Paint that out. Now, there are some tricks here when you're using a paintbrush. For instance, if I click right here, and then I shift click right here, it's going to draw a straight line between the two of them, and that pretty much gets rid of that roof line for me. And I'm going, oh, my square brackets are working again. There we are. They're the ones beside the P. I'm going to hold Shift, click around there and over there. Get rid of this stuff over here. Now, I could spend a little bit more time tweaking this than I'm probably going to for the sake of the demo. But let's get it, you know, reasonably close. I want to get rid of this little bit right here. So I'll click and Shift click down. Reduce the size of this brush a little bit more. There we go. And maybe right here. To there. There we go. So that's going to be good enough. So there we are. We have the sky selected, except we actually want to select everything but the sky. So in order to do that, I can just push Command or Control I. I'll show you that from the menu. That's under Select. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> because it's a mask, it's going to be under Image, Adjustments, and then choose Invert. So there we are. We have inverted things. And I do notice that that sky isn't quite as black as I'd like it to be, so I'm just going to paint that in a little bit. 
Now that might give me a funny edge. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to undo that. Okay, so here we are. We got the foreground selected. Now I can, can, I can select that by uh, holding Command or Control and just clicking on this uh, the layer thumbnail or the, the uh, channel thumbnail. But also from the menu, I'm just going to go right back to our uh, RGB layer right here or our channel and go back to the layers. I can go to the select menu and choose load selection and it's sky. We'll click OK. And there we are. It's loaded everything actually but the sky. So we actually are selecting the ground. And what I want to do now is I want to create a layer mask that gets rid of all of this. So I'm going to choose my add layer mask icon right here. But this is a background layer. So if you're using an older version of Photoshop, older than CS6, then you will actually need to convert this to a non-background layer. You can do that by double clicking, just clicking OK. And then we'll click the add layer mask icon and the sky should vanish. Well, yeah. So now what I need to do is I need to come up with a sky that matches this one or is plausible. So I noticed that the brightest part of the sky was right here. If I hold shift while I click on this layer mask, you can disable it and see, yep, that's the brightest part of the sky. Hold shift and click on that again to bring it back in. I've got this picture of a, of a sky right here. And I want to uh, move this one on. It's got a bright spot right here too, so that matches. I'm just going to click with my move tool, drag it over here, and drop it on. Now I actually want to drag this down below that layer, and poof, we've got the beginnings of our composite. So I can reposition this as I need to. Again, I've got the move tool. That's right there in the, in the uh, toolbox. I'm going to hold my shift key as I move it just to keep it so that it's vertical, so I'm not like, you know losing I'm not moving it over a few pixels here with a jagged edge so there we are it's uh, it's in position I think it's a bit bright so what I would do is I would come up here to my adjustments I'd add a curves adjustment layer and brighten that up just a little bit like this sorry when I, I didn't mean the sky was too bright I meant it was too dark um, there we are and put that away now the edges aren't great here um, I do notice that uh, part of my lamp here is selected, so I can come over here, grab my brush tool, and paint white, and that will actually restore that area that I'm painting on. That's cool. Anyways, what I want to do here is I actually want to sort of darken down the very edges of the stuff that's around the sky. That'll make it look a little bit more believable. So what I want to do is I actually want to duplicate this layer right here. So I'll just right click on it and choose uh, duplicate layer right there. I normally do that with a keyboard shortcut, but I try to avoid doing those while I'm doing videos. Just click OK. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of this layer on top. So this one here that says layer zero right now, I want to convert that into, uh, I'm going to convert the blend mode. That's this little bit here. And then that this little drop down menu that controls how the layer here interacts with the layer beneath it. In this case, I'm going to choose multiply and that's going to basically burn this image into this one, sort of like you're printing uh, the picture of the house on top of the picture of the sky. So that darkens things down a little bit and then I'm going to turn that layer on top back on. Now what I want to do is I kind of want to soften the edges of this so that just on the very edges, that layer that I've got beneath it that darkens things down shows through. So I'm going to select the layer mask. That's a little black and white thumbnail right here. And I'm going to choose select and then refine mask. So it's going to pop up. And I'm going to choose this feather button. That's going to uh, fade the edge just a little bit. And I'm going to fade that by one pixel. And then what I want to do is there's this, oh, for whatever reason, it's decided to have a mind of its own. I left it at 1, and it decides it wants 40. Okay, there we go. And I want to move this shift edge and start to move it so it actually contracts the selection a little bit. And what that'll do, there we go, is it starts to sh allow the mask, uh, the, the layer underneath to show through. Now that's probably a bit far. So I'm actually going to move this up a little bit. And yeah, that'll work. And we'll click OK. 
And again, I can reposition that sky any way I want to. But yeah, this is what the uh, image looks like right now. And if I shift click on this right here, I'll see my original image. There's the one with the boring sky. And there's the one with the more interesting sky. And you'll notice, hey, it's even working in here in these little holes within the tree and in there too. I'll show you before and after. Pretty cool. Hope that was helpful.